Ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners and watchers, this is already the fifth Bluffed cast. And today I have a very special guest, as always. My special guest is uh, Plamena. Plamena is um, shining like a diamond. And she is going to tell something about her experiences as an entrepreneur. And she's going to tell something about her uh, life, partly in the USA, partly in Bulgaria. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Plamena for you. Hello, Plamina. Hi. Hi, Hello. guys. <laughs> Welcome to Hi, the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast and thank you for thank accepting you. my invitation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is amazing. Amazing. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, you How are, are you? Very, I am very fine. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Um, just actually having a beautiful rest here at home. Uh, and combine it with work a little great. bit. So yeah, you know, Easter holidays are a great time to combine pleasure with work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you win the egg fight? For the people who don't know in Bulgaria, we have the tradition of egg fighting and there's probably something on Google. If you search it on Google, you'll find something. So did you win the egg fight in your family or not? This year, no. <laughs> uh, you had the weak egg. <laughs> This year, my mother was the winner. <laughs> uh, or you were But very polite okay. to your mom. Okay. <laughs> great, yeah. great. Uh, for uh, the people who don't know, Plamena, this is the Plamena is the first Bulgarian who is uh, on my podcast. As you know, if you follow my channel, you'll see that I have, have interviewed some uh, some expats before. But um, yeah, Plamena has a nice story to tell, and I couldn't wait actually to hear that story and to let you hear that story. So uh, yeah, let's let's start with that. Um, I know that you have been living in the United States for a while. How long were you there and what was the reason for you to leave Bulgaria and go to New York? You were, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, well, uh, I was living there for two years and a half. Okay. And um, I had that dream uh, when I was a little child to go there and live. So I had that dream since I was like a, a little child. And it was mm -hmm. a beautiful outcome because I've completed my dream and went to live in New York City. Um, I was working there in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. um, It was just amazing experience for me, Chris, because that was the first time in my life where I faced many difficulties there and managed to go through them. And, um, you know, that period of time really left like a very, very precious lesson to me in life. And, um, you know, that's why... I feel like um, international personality because mm -hmm. I've been living in international environment there, socializing with many different people from all over the world. And I like when I come back to my own country to see such a great uh, expat community here mm -hmm. where we can exchange experiences and um, meet like-minded people. Uh, that's why I like Plovdiv very much because it's so diverse uh -huh. and beautiful. Yes, it, is. it is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so can you, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about um, what happened? I mean, you had the dream, you wanted to go to New York specifically or to just to go to the United States or to go abroad. What, what was exactly that dream? Tell me a little bit more about that. I had a dream. Remember when I we were dream. teenagers, there was uh -huh. an MTV show. Uh -huh. uh, there was like a, like a chart. It, uh, it used to be uh, that they play the music. Uh, what's the most popular song for the day? Uh -huh. So that, that chart was, uh, they always launched it from Times Square. Mm -hmm. It was very popular back then. And mm -hmm. my dream was to go there and to be guest in the, cro in the crowd. Uh -huh. So that really happened. <laughs> when I went, yes, when I went to live in New York City, I got invited to go to this show. But I said at the time, because I was living in Queens, mm -hmm. uh, the chat was in Manhattan. Um, I just, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the show. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? I'm living here. I can always come. Uh, so I didn't go to this in invitation. Mm -hmm. And exactly at this year, at this year, 2007, when I was there, mm -hmm. they closed the show. So you missed it. 
I missed it. And that's oh. why I say whenever you have an opportunity, my message to people is never, never wait for the right moment because uh -huh. it will never be the right moment. Just grab the opportunity and go. So I, I was so sorry. I was so sorry that I missed this, missed this opportunity. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, that was my dream. I went to New York City. It was mm -hmm. very difficult to live there, you know, as a foreigner, mm -hmm. as a person who had never been abroad in her life. That was my first time when mm -hmm. I went abroad from my own country. And I had to actually survive there in this jungle and uh, try <laughs> to find a job, <laughs> which was a very difficult process, by the way, uh -huh. <laughs> because... I had to do it by myself. Like I, you know, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have the assistance of any agency or stuff. Mm. So I spent like the first five months, mm. five difficult six months of finding a job in New York City. Mm. I was totally broke. Was living with two friends in mm -hmm. a very small one-room apartment. Please. We were three people in a one-room apartment, very wow. small in Queens. <laughs> wow. We were actually sleeping at the same bed with one of my friends and the other mm -hmm. one was sleeping on the other bed. It was like really, uh, yeah. yeah, it was tough. Um, and so this and was yeah, your this was your american dream or what was it <laughs> american dream but you know after struggling after this period of time of struggling finally yeah. i've managed to find the proper job and lead a very decent lifestyle in new york city have my routines my friends places to go out and everything but before that i had to go uh, from interview to interview every single day mm -hmm. um and uh, I didn't really had, uh, I remember one of the interviews I had to go to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So I was traveling from Queens to Manhattan, but I really didn't have enough money to get the, the train from mm -hmm. one place to another. So I remember that you had to go, uh, you ha I had to take four trains in order to go mm -hmm. to Manhattan for the interview. I had money only for three of them. So I decided... <laughs> Okay, Plummy, you're going to walk. You will walk. Well, I, I took the train to one uh. part to Manhattan. And from there, I had to walk to the place for the interview. Uh. So I left three hours earlier with the only pair of shoes that I had at the time mm -hmm. that they were actually, they were actually uh, torn. They had a hole uh, underneath <laughs> the sole. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. <laughs> But that they, <laughs> they were the only one, these were the only one pair of shoes I had at the time. I did not have any money to buy new ones. And all I did it was going to from interview to interview every single day, wow. loaning money from my friends just to be able to survive and Amazing. you know put my life together there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and so and yeah. you succeeded. You succeeded, right? You got the job, right? I got the job after I was go. I, I'm gonna be really quick. Was going uh -huh. to the interview, but on the way it was like a storm, raining cats and dogs, so heavy rain. Mm -hmm. I was the only person who was walking in the rain. Like cars were beeping at me. I was walking in the rain, going to the interview. And when I appeared to the to the that restaurant, I was uh, going for the bartender position. Uh -huh. The manager looked at me. And he was like what are you doing here? I was like, I'm coming for the interview. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like, what? I did not expect to see you here in this heavy storm. He felt so sorry about me at this time that he was like, just because you came here at these conditions, uh -huh. I'm going to give you the job whether you have the experience or not. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's amazing. Maybe, maybe that says something about like the American attitude towards this. I don't know, but it's it's very it's a very interesting story. And yeah, did, how long you. did you have this job? For how long did you have this job? Actually, I left that one, and uh, <laughs> I've changed. <laughs> I've changed five, six more. I remember that I was counting them until twenty, and when I met the twenty number, I stopped counting them. But finally, yes, I've managed to find a very good job at, at one of the best uh, restaurants in Manhattan, Italian fine restaurants in Manhattan, and. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, I had a great team, great colleagues over there. Um, also, that was a popular restaurant that was very favorite of the celebrities because it was close to a theater. Oh. And it would happen, yeah, time to time, some of the celebrities who would come over there to have a dinner. And I personally met some of them, like David Schwimmer and um, uh, Kate Winnieslet and some other. Ah, nice, uh, nice, nice. That's a, that's a good guy. Like, that will not happen so much in Plovdiv, I think. Uh, <laughs> Famous people. You never coming. know. <laughs> uh, uh, true. We have to invite them. We have to try. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? So, uh, what, was the, what was the most interesting experience you had? It can be positive or negative, whatever you want. But what was the most uh, interesting experience for you? In, in, uh, in New York as a Bulgarian lady living there? What was for you like, wow, this was, or maybe it was something that was completely different than what you expected or something that's completely different from your life in Bulgaria. But yeah, I'm, I'm just curious yeah. about that. Well, my first impression from there was that people are very, um, they're very kind. Mm -hmm. they're very, they're, some of them, are, uh, I have friends who are asking me, how come they're kind? Actually, New Yorkers are not like that. Well, they were very kind and they mm -hmm. uh, accept you the way you are. They're mm -hmm. not judging you whether you're from some place or another. At least that's how I felt. Uh -huh. They yeah. were extremely kind. Ex they, you, they give opportunities there. If you know, if you have the skill you will receive the opportunity. That's what I like about um, about the States in general. Yeah. Um, it's just, you feel, I felt accepted. I felt accepted there. There is, especially in New York City, there is a space for everyone under uh -huh. the sun there. Everyone are living in such a great, uh, uh, how to say, sim uh it's just in a in a in a very good uh balance uh -huh. oh, interesting. <laughs> in a very yeah. good balance and in a, in a peace at least that was my experience there and i brought this experience everywhere i went after that around the world because after that i used to live in the dubai and abu dhabi and then i came here and this experience is just helping me everywhere i go mm -hmm. um because they actually taught me my first customer service skills and also they taught me that you have to be really tough and strong if you want to achieve something in your yeah. life. You have to fight for it. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yes. think it's a good, a good thing and not to sit, to be lazy and wait till somebody brings it to you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so after America, did you go to Bulgaria or did you go to Dubai? How, how did this go? Yeah, I went back to Sofia to finish my education. That was the reason mm -hmm. why I came back to Bulgaria, because mm -hmm. the um, education was very important to me. I started the university at the time that I stopped it because because of the time living in New York. And then uh, I came back to finish uh, the bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, you know, like I said at the beginning, I'm uh -huh. re re pretty much international kind of a person. I was led again by my other dream, which was to work in the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. And this is what brought me, the destiny brought me to, uh, to Dubai because mm -hmm. at the time um, Emirates had an interview in Sofia where I attended and I was accepted um, to work for Emirates Group in Dubai cool. as a, yeah, as an agent. And uh -huh. later on, then uh, continue following the dream of exploring the world, traveling <laughs> to different <laughs> countries. Oh, it's nice if you work for the aviation, you don't have to pay it for a ticket, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. After yeah, after becoming a flight attendant, which by the way again was another obstacle because I was the first Bulgarian from the group who went to work for Etihad Airways as a cabin crew because Opa. everybody around me were telling me that I'm not, I will I'm not good enough, I'm not tall enough, and I don't have my English is not good enough. Ah, okay. But be despite of that. Again, this was after happened. you lived after you lived in New York. Your English was not good enough. Uh, that's interesting. 
So how did those people in New York understand you? Like, how did you communicate? Oh, they were very happy to hear my <laughs> accent. They were always asking me, where are you from? Your accent yeah. is very interesting. Well, people, and from they were New York, so... <laughs> people from New York also have an accent. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they have, anyway, yeah. they have no. a special way of well, speaking English as well. So. Uh, yeah, but by the way, they're very, uh, they were very curious to know more about Bulgaria. Uh, yeah. Not all of them knew about Bulgaria, but like 50% knew the other 50 doesn't. But that well, was uh, that's, like a, that's a, a high long score time. for Americans, I would say. <coughs> no, because I, well, even I didn't know anything about Bulgaria. This is, uh, if you maybe saw in some, some other interviews that I, had, I knew that the capital is called Sofia. This is what I knew about Bulgaria before I came to Bulgaria. I knew that it was, I knew where it was. I was in the Balkan and I know they have this strange alphabet that looks like that, <laughs> like the, that the Russians also use. I mean, I will not say Russian alphabet because- The Slavic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the Cyrillic alphabet. I knew that, that the, this was used in Bulgaria as well. And this is why I thought that Bulgarian and, and Russian shall be very close because they use the same alphabet. That was my idea, uh, very smart guy. <laughs> But uh, do you do you like it being here so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's uh, it's like I said, it was a very positive surprise for me to be here. Like what I wanted to say about this is that I didn't know anything basically about Bulgaria, you know. And what, basically, I thought that whole Bulgaria looks a bit like like Lulin, or like you know, like like I was thinking about all these gray. Prospects, uh, they call this in, in, in Russia. The you know, you have these communistic... Gray, uh, yeah, these gray, uh, endless rows of gray buildings. I was like, like <laughs> Bulgaria is a very gray country, basically. Like, So I had no idea about Rodopi or about wine or about all the beautiful nature that is here that is basically untouched. And yeah, so I had a complete different idea about Bulgaria. And what's the one thing that you love the most here? <laughs> Oh, that's a choose. <laughs> uh, I cannot. I cannot choose really. Well, like uh, the, one of the most positive things is that I have a Bulgarian girlfriend, and that's a really, good really, choice. Really, uh, <laughs> well, it's 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 an obvious choice if you live in Bulgaria, right? <laughs> but yeah, I know I'm very very happy with her, and uh, this is also gives me another perspective of the country because you know to see her family and to 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 see the uh, traditions, to see to just view uh the country and like learn more about the language this is also important still i'm not very good at bulgarian but anyhow anyhow leka po leka na gore nali so so um to get back to your story what did you study because it was very important for you to finish it so what was your study did your study have anything to do with traveling or did you study something completely different well, uh, yeah, I study public administration, oh. which is, yeah, it's a major very well, It's way. very related to going to New York and Dubai. Yeah, yeah no, I, I see Pretty much related. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I have to be honest, I have never worked uh, with my major. Uh, uh -huh. I've never had a profession connected with my major. And Maybe I don't lucky. have an interest <laughs> even. <laughs> to have that profession uh -huh. uh, I think I think uh, I mixed uh, mixed my um, uh, my major I uh -huh. had to study something completely different definitely not this because this is pretty much very kind of a straightforward boring job nine to five where you are working in a ministry somewhere or just in the state uh, sector mm. well i have an I, idea you could work in immigration i mean finally we have someone <laughs> speaking english that would be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, that's you have, and you have experience <laughs> with people and with international so i think you would do great but they can't afford you probably <laughs> <laughs> That's again, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, it's good to try different things in life because um, I've discovered that now when I'm working at the moment from nine to five, which is something temporary, discovered that it's not my thing. Like I'm mm. a person who always wants to, to learn and to discover new things. And this is uh, why I started now the new, um, uh, my business, because I've discovered that I actually have the entrepreneur spirit within me mm -hmm. uh, rather than the public administration uh, woman. I think so, yeah. <laughs> 
it seems to be <laughs> like you're going somewhere where I mean it has not so much to do with your study. That's that's uh, clear yes. to me. So, yes, so yes. to summarize, you've been to the United States, you've been to Dubai. Uh, why did you come back? Basically, because you know people most of the time when you work in Dubai or when you live in the United States and you have a life, you make more money than you make in Bulgaria. Or at least this is what people tell. So, what was the reason for you to say like, oh, I'm going back? Screw the air, screw the airline, screw whatever. <laughs> not, not everything looks like the, uh, the people think it looks like. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's why working I in a, yeah, yeah. I love Bulgaria. Bulgaria, I think it's it's um, undiscovered diamond that mm. it has a lot to show to the world with the nature, with its people, uh, with the culture and everything. Mm -hmm. So, but the real reason why I came back, I love my job flying, but All I right. have to be honest with you that flying, uh, this is not an easy profession, mm -hmm. and it takes it takes its uh, sacrifices and risks. Mm -hmm. So the reason I came back to Bulgaria was actually a health issue mm -hmm. that I've experienced while flying. And I had to stop flying because the doctor said, either you stop flying, either you're going to have a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came back here to Bulgaria starting from the zero, mm -hmm. like totally starting it all over again. I've just managed to have all these kind of a lifestyle there, uh -huh. uh, the job, the friends, as much as I could allow to go out. Because, you know, uh -huh. flying is a, uh, it's a pretty lonely job, if I have to be honest. It's because you're flying top. with... <laughs> always, always flying with so many people, but at uh -huh. the same time, you're always alone at the hotel room because every time we meet on every flight, we are totally brand new people uh -huh. and you yeah. never get to stick with the same uh, people every time. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's impossible because it was a huge uh, airline. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it mm, came back here and um, I started to discover little by little things that I, do, I didn't even know about Bulgaria, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's just made me such a huge impression because after this profession, flying to Asia, uh, uh -huh. Australia, Africa, America, and visited so many countries, I actually realized that Bulgaria has amazing amazing qualities and amazing nature uh -huh. even yeah. as something that we need to show to the to the world and i came back here i was so happy to enjoy the time spending here with friends and family and everything but it was tough because i didn't really have a clear plan what to uh -huh. do what how to start from where to start, I start this job, like uh, this office job. I'd never had an office job in my life at mm -hmm. the time. It was very interesting in the beginning, but then I realized that it's not for me. And there you go. The, when the pandemic happened, I actually started to build my own brand and which uh, mission is to help people all over the world. So... Cool. Oh, that sounds, sounds sounds really great. So basically you were back in Bulgaria, but you had kind of the same feeling as when you were in New York. Like, here's me, I'm alone here and I have to start all, I have to start from, from zero. Like kind of the same experience, but then back in Bulgaria. Was that absolutely was yes. that disappointing yes. for you or did you expect something else or how, how was that for you? Well, Chris, uh, I came to a city, I didn't uh, come back to my the city where I grew up actually ah, okay. I grew up to the high school I I come I came back to a different city here Plovdiv it's a city where I live here already seven years uh -huh. so I didn't most of my friends from the childhood they were either abroad or living in the capital so yeah. uh, it was challenging for me to find uh, my own tribe uh -huh. uh, and it was challenging also to find a job, to find my own, own circle of friends and everything. Yeah, yeah. It took me, you know, what I've discovered with the years, when the, the years are passing, um, it's, it's getting more difficult with the time to find your own tribe, uh -huh. I think. Yeah. Uh, the younger Correct. you yeah. are, the easier, the easier yeah. it is. 
I think so. But yeah, anyway, I've managed. I've managed to do it, to find the hobbies, the job, the friends, and everything. I like it here so far. But to be honest, I'm really missing I'm, I'm, my my uh, personality of the international lady uh -huh. who wants to travel. It's still like pushing me from inside and saying, <laughs> Flamena, it's time for you to move a little bit. I'm just so missing uh, it so much. And I guess everybody is missing it, especially in the conditions that we're living right now. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not alone in that, I'm sure. <laughs> absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, so, so from starting from zero, then you had the office job and then you were like, hey, this is not for me. So you're beginning to start your own company. Tell me a little bit more about that because you said it's you're helping people all over the world. So you started a company with United Nations or whatever. What did what, what did you do? <laughs> United Nations. Mm, very good. <laughs> good idea. I'm full of uh, good it's ideas. Close. Close. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, last year, when all of us experienced this, um, you know, terrible situation, mm. at the beginning, it, like, I was a little bit frustrated and a little bit afraid. But then after time, I said, stop it. I don't want to live in fear anymore. So that's why I decided to focus on something completely different that could take the attention away from what, what was happening back then. Mm -hmm. So I created a jewelry brand that mm -hmm. um, it has a mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's well, I want to show, like, I want to expose the feminine, the feminine power, and the 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 femininity and the the kindness in in a woman that she can she can look really beautiful with affordable jewelry no need to break the bank so uh -huh. you can have a good jewelry and look really elegant and nice but at the same time the real mission of the brand is to share people's stories of optimism through the jewelry uh, creating meaningful connections and inspiring the world. So basically, every piece of a jewelry has a unique story to tell, mm -hmm. of, uh, and it's a global ambassador of a unique woman who is standing behind this jewelry, sharing her story. And that's what makes the jewelry um, the ambassadors of optimism, and that, that's what makes them so unique in this brand. Mm -hmm. So you created your own brand of, of jewelry. Absolutely. Yes, you, it's available you, you worldwide. Make them, you make them yourself or, or how does it go? Do you have a shop somewhere in Plovdiv or, or can you tell a little bit more about that? Yes, sure. Um, well, the designs of the jewelry are carefully select from um, the suppliers that I work with. I'm not doing mm -hmm. them by myself at this very moment but I choose them very carefully with the specific suppliers that I work. They are available all over the world. They're still not available here in Europe though, but ah. we're working with my team. They will be pretty much really uh, soon released here as well. And um, like I said, yes, it's a, my aim is to make this brand um, the ambassador of good of the positivism mm -hmm. and to be the global global brand global ambassador through mm -hmm. the jewelries through the beautiful world of jewelries <laughs> i okay. actually have already a couple of ladies who already became a part of the mission of the brand and they already shared your story cool. so some of the pieces are wearing very inspiring stories behind them ah that's very that's very interesting so do you also share something about because what I what I understand is that basically your products are now not available in Bulgaria right now, right? Yes, so, at the moment not yet. Uh, so do you share something because you you're basically talking with foreigners? Do you share also something about Bulgaria to them? Because you said that Bulgaria is like a it's an undiscovered diamond and diamond jewelry. I, I got the point. I know the bridge that you were making there. So do you share something about them? Do you do you like share about Bulgaria to them? Do you like advertise Bulgaria in a certain way through your jewelry, maybe? Or uh, is there something that you do to, let's say, promote Bulgaria? And, and what Absolutely. is that what you do? This is my aim as well. <laughs> yes. Part of the pieces of the jewelries are where um, 
uh, they are arriving with a uh, with a small coin which is engraved mm -hmm. with um uh, with a fortune and this ah. is coming from and it's part it's, uh, it's inspired from the unique bulgarian tradition on new year's eve where you know we gather and we take piece of the banita ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you have um uh, yeah a, a lot like a fortune in the yeah. banita that actually determines how your next year will go so every lady who has like piece of jewelry she received this um coin which is engraved with uh let's say happiness good luck health and this piece she can uh, carry with her and the piece will determine how the next period of time will go for her it is also written in the website that it's it's inspired from uh, unique Bulgarian tradition and mm -hmm. one of the one of the uh, very good uh, how can I say marketing specialist in the United States was she basically helped me promote that brand and she mm -hmm. was really uh, inspired and it was very interesting for her to get to know about this tradition <laughs> because it's unique I don't uh -huh. know yeah, if yeah, there yeah, is yeah. such tradition anywhere in the world so and not in my yes, country, I'm not in my country. To... Well, we wish each other luck, but we don't have like we don't hide stuff in cakes. But I think in... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was lucky this year, by the way. By the way, I had the in the Banitza, I had the I found the coin. So, so what this, was the your ah the coin? Okay, the coin. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's yeah, only yeah. one coin. There's only this one is coin. This a symbol so... for prosperity. Yeah, so I was lucky. So uh, I just waited until the money rains down on me. But uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is why I do activities, and I hope that one of them sooner or sooner or later will just bring uh, bring the prosperity. I mean, prosperity of will course. not will not come on the couch. I think. I mean, I work. I mean, despite if I work from the couch, but otherwise, no, I don't think it works like that. <laughs> It's just a sign that, but it was, I felt, I felt blessed by that. Okay. I'm the one with the coin right now. So this year wow. should be a good, good year then, right? This According is absolutely, this is a good sign. We, we Bulgarians really believe that. So if you receive the coin, definitely it's a good sign and it's a sign of a prosperity. So it will be a prosperous year, year for you. Yeah. I can sense. And I'm wishing you good luck with the, <laughs> thank you. With this initiative. <laughs> so, just to get back to your story, how is it for you to to be back now in Bulgaria? And uh, another question that I want to relate to it is like, do you feel that Bulgaria is now your final destination? Like, I'm you're going to shoot your roots here, you're back where you belong, and this way, or do you have like this itch, like ah, maybe I would live in New Zealand next year, or blah blah blah? <laughs> like, how is that? <laughs> um. I have always dream, dreamed to uh, dream uh, to be an um, uh, international like kind of a to, to lead international kind of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I love my country and I know that one of the places uh, where I will live will be implodif, but my mm -hmm. dream is to live on two places, mm -hmm. one of two or three maximum. Mm -hmm. One of them here in Plovdiv, the other one in New York, because mm -hmm. New York has a trade in my soul. And the third one could be somewhere where I love exotic nature, palm trees, and forever summer. Ah. I, my dream is to find a home in a hot, like a very warm country where uh -huh. I can spend the winter there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. my dream is to live at least on three places. I don't want to be really static on one place. So I'm looking forward to complete this dream uh, within this year or the upcoming year. Uh, and to, yeah, and to find a home um, except here somewhere else as well. Because I'm driven from, from this... Uh, from the personality that I have, I have I'm like that since I'm a, a little child, so mm -hmm. I cannot really I cannot really settle on one place. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. Sounds good. And why Plovdiv? I mean, what makes Plovdiv for you so special? I think Plovdiv is unique. There is something in here, uh, some kind of um uh, just a spirit, uh, some mm -hmm. kind of energy. Plovdiv is unique city. I think it's Bulgaria has a wonderful seaside cities as well. The capital is beautiful, but Plovdiv is just um, 
it's like a fairy tale to me it has the perfect climate mm -hmm. it's not really cold uh, during yeah. the winter it has these uh, magical seven hills that every hill has a story to tell yeah. um it has so much culture in it and so much history it's one of the most the ancient city in the world that yeah, has yeah, a lot of true. history as well yeah and the people are very kind here on the south south of bulgaria people are really nice soft count well uh -huh. uh, kind welcoming and that's why i think the city is unique and it's it's really beautiful it has a lot to uh, to show and i wouldn't live anywhere else in bulgaria but plotif sounds good that's a good uh good advertisement thing for 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 plovdiv um <laughs> so one of my last questions is always and i want to going to ask it to you is like how do you see the future of of plovdiv or the 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 future of bulgaria how do you see it developing i'm very optimistic about it mm -hmm. i think because i'm here already seven years and i can tell you that i see development and i see change every year since mm -hmm. i arrived which speaks very good for the country in general and i'm a, i'm a pretty much optimistic about the future of the country because people really they really strive they really want some change and some a positivism in here you could see mm -hmm. in everything that's happening here even right now that we are changing a government at the moment <laughs> and i believe yeah i believe that it's new lead elections to right something really good <laughs> there's going to be new elections again so yes absolutely. another another chance another chance another chance another chance <laughs> we will do it again if we have to do it one more time we'll do it one more time but uh yeah i mean i I see i see development and when you when you see something that is going towards growth it's in, inevitable to achieve it so sooner or later it's just a matter of time that bulgaria will become better at tourism better at mm. customer service and just uh better as a conditions to live in here as well for, for not only for locals but for foreigners as well mm. I truly yeah. believe that. My dream is to see a really in, like a Bulgaria with a very high standard, with a very secure environment for living in, and with the international environment where people can just come here and relax and enjoy their time. Not that they cannot do it right now, it's amazing, but uh, it still have a lot to improve. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. have a lot, but it will be, it will happen, I believe. Good. That's a very, very positive message. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> so as a last thing uh, or as a last item or whatever you want to say, because it's not really a question. Um, so what is the, if you, you would, uh, uh, yeah, thinking about the little listeners, the people who watch this podcast, what is this one thing that you want to tell them from all the experience in your life? What is one message that you want to give to them? always follow your dreams <laughs> oh. never give up and focus on the positivism very good that's, that's what that's i very, would say that's very very nice lamina <laughs> thanks a lot for being in my podcast it was really awesome to have you here it was an honor thank you very much for having me thank you for the invitation and i'm wishing you really good luck with the initiative i love really i love the podcast <laughs> thanks a lot well with such bright guests then i don't think there's any reason why this podcast is not should not have a lot of listeners i think you are one of the people who shares a lot of positivism and a lot of uh yeah good ideas with people so uh yeah i think uh yeah it's it should be i mean with with such kind of people like you i mean it should just work right <laughs> so yeah. dear dear listeners and watchers we are at the end of the fifth uh, podcast right now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for uh, people who subscribe. Thank you for the people who are always watching, who are always listening. Uh, you are amazing. So, ciao, ciao, do and tot ziens.